Have you ever heard about a company so powerful that it could decide whether a world war starts or not? It sounds hard to believe. But what if I tell you that such a company exists and most people have never even heard its name? It doesn't make weapons, oil, or gold. Yet every modern fighter jet, smartphone, satellite, and even your washing machine depends on it. Well, that company is TSMC, which stands for Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, and this company controls the world. If you are as curious as me to find out how, then let us dive in without any further ado. TSMC is quietly the reason why World War III has not yet started, and maybe one day, it could also be the reason it does. This company makes semiconductor chips, the tiny components that work as the brains of modern technology. They are inside iPhones, spacecraft, space stations, fighter jets, and home appliances. And here's the unbelievable part. TSMC produces 60% of the world's mid-level semiconductor chips and an incredible 92.5% of the advanced ones. In fact, there are only two companies in the entire world that can make 5 nanometer chips, and they are Samsung, with 7.5% of the share, and TSMC has the remaining 92.5%. But why are these semiconductor chips such a big deal? Well, 98% of the world's electronic devices rely on them. Without these chips, almost everything from phones to cars would simply stop working. And since TSMC controls most of this supply, it has become one of the most powerful and valuable companies in history. Yet there's another company that's even more crucial in a hidden way, a company from the Netherlands called ASML. ASML makes the machines used to produce the most advanced chips, and it is the only company in the world that manufactures the extreme ultraviolet lithography machines required for 5 nanometer semiconductors and it holds 100% of the global market for that technology. But this raises a big question. If ASML builds the machines, why doesn't it just make the chips itself and rule the market completely? Well, to answer this, we have to go back to the beginning. Yes, to the invention of the semiconductor chip itself. In 1958, an engineer named Jack Kilby from Texas Instruments created the very first semiconductor chip. He built it all alone while the rest of his team was away on summer vacation. Kilby's idea was revolutionary, but his chip design wasn't ready for mass production. Then, in 1959, another engineer, Robert Noyce, who co-founded Fairchild Semiconductor, developed a silicon-based chip that could be manufactured automatically. This made it perfect for industrial use. Both Kilby and Noyce filed patents for their inventions. Kilby in February 1959, and Noyce in July of the same year. Many years later, in 2000, Jack Kilby was awarded the Nobel Prize for inventing the semiconductor chip. But people wondered why Robert Noyce didn't get it too, since his chip was the one that actually changed the industry. Hmm, the answer is pretty simple. Noyce had already passed away by then, and according to the Nobel Prize rules, the award can only go to living individuals. Still, Noyce is remembered as the father of Silicon Valley because of his role in inventing the silicon chip. After leaving Fairchild, he founded Intel, one of the most successful companies in technology history. Now, how did semiconductor technology reach Taiwan? Back then, Taiwan used to produce basic electronics like toys, TVs, and radios for foreign companies. All of these devices used chips, which were either supplied by those companies or imported from the United States or Japan. That dependence made Taiwan realize the importance of semiconductor chips, and that's when the government decided to invest in this new industry. They turned to Morris Chang, a Chinese-born engineer who had left mainland China after the Communist Revolution and moved to the United States. He completed his PhD in electrical engineering at Stanford University and became a vice president at Texas Instruments. He led its semiconductor division. Taiwan invited Morris Chang to come back and help them build their own chip industry. With his experience, he founded TSMC. Chang noticed that while many companies could design chips, very few had the factories needed to manufacture them. 
So he created TSMC as a company that would focus only on manufacturing chips for others. With help from the Dutch company Philips, he set up the first pure chip foundry model, which meant that TSMC would produce chips for anyone who designed them. The company's first customer was Xilinx. It is a fabulous company that designed chips but didn't have a factory. Its second customer was Altera, another fabulous firm. Both companies became very successful. Well, Intel later acquired Altera in 2015, and AMD acquired Xilinx in 2022. This model helped TSMC grow faster than anyone imagined. But why can't China, the world's factory, make its own advanced 5 nanometer chips? The reason lies in one machine, the EUV or Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography machine made by ASML. Without this machine, it's impossible to produce 5 nanometer chips. China's own company, SMIC, can only make 7 nanometer chips so far. In 2019, the United States pressured the Netherlands to stop ASML from selling EUV machines to China, and this froze China's progress in advanced chip making. Even for 7 nanometer chips, China still needs another type of ASML machine called the DUV, or Deep Ultraviolet Lithography System. Nikon and Canon make similar systems, but ASML dominates the market. This US ban slowed China down in the short term, but it also pushed the country to build its own machines. China has started a company called Shanghai Microelectronics Equipment to create both DUV and EUV systems. So far, it has managed to produce a 28 nanometer DUV machine and is now working on a 7 nanometer version. Many experts believe that by 2035 or 2040, China might catch up and directly compete with TSMC. Now you might think, why doesn't ASML make its own chips and become the most powerful company in the world? The answer is that making chips requires extremely advanced factories, precision, and years of expertise that companies like TSMC and Samsung already have. Even if ASML wanted to do it, the United States would not allow a single company to control such critical technology. Now, let's look at the major players in this network. The top 10 semiconductor fabrication companies are TSMC at 3 nanometers, Samsung Foundry at 5, Intel Foundry at 7, SMIC at 7, Global Foundries at 12, UMC at 14, PSMC at 16, DB, Hitech at 90, Vanguard International at 90, and Tower Semiconductor at 130. But why does size matter so much? Well, smaller chips perform faster and consume less power. At this point, many people might assume that because the US has 3 nanometer chips and China has 7 nanometer chips and America holds a big military advantage, but that's not exactly true. Defense equipment doesn't always use the smallest chips because tiny chips tend to produce more heat and are harder to cool. Military systems need durable heat-resistant chips that can survive extreme conditions. That's why defense technology often relies on chips between 14 and 130 nanometers. So in terms of military capability, the chip gap between the US and China doesn't make a major difference. Now comes the most important question. What will be the result of this semiconductor war? The United States has already banned China from buying EUV machines and continues to protect Taiwan because of TSMC. Even though TSMC chips are officially banned in China, they still reach Chinese companies through indirect channels. This situation is one of the main reasons why China hasn't attacked Taiwan yet. TSMC has already started building a plant in Arizona, which is now in its testing phase. If this factory becomes successful, Taiwan's importance to the US might slowly decrease. So, in the end, we can see how one company stands at the center of global power. TSMC doesn't build missiles or control armies, but it holds more influence than many governments. Its chips power almost everything around us, and its location determines the stability of global politics. So what do you think? Will TSMC remain the invisible key to the world's technology and security? Can a single company really control the peace of the world? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure you show us your love by giving us a thumbs up. 
For more similar videos, subscribe to the channel.